Hello. <clears throat> well, today I'm gonna talk about a film that uh, uh, I hadn't seen in uh, some time, but I, the urge of uh, re-watching it uh, came about, and so uh, you know, I enjoyed it, and I thought, you know, I like to talk about it here, and so <clears throat> well, yeah, I'm talking, gonna talk about it is Training Day. Starring uh, Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke. Uh, also has Scott Glenn, Curtis Cliff, Dr. Dre, and Snoop Dogg. Um, of course, you know, Denzel Washington plays uh, <clears throat> Alonzo Harris. He, uh, you know, uh, corrupt uh, undercover narcotics detective. And, um, Jake Hoyt, played by uh, Ethan Hawke. It's his training day, his first day in that division. And so he's uh, you know, uh, going out uh, with him and just experiencing uh, what everything is basically like for a day. And the whole film, of course, takes place during a day. You know, I mean, it's called training day, but still. Um, <clears throat> and the dynamic between Denzel Washington and um, Ethan Hawke is really great. Um, they have great chemistry, and uh, just to see how the sort of the relationship they have at the beginning of the film and the whole how everything just transpires to the end is really fascinating to watch, and it's really good. Uh, uh, Antoine Fuqua um, did a great job uh, with the film. Uh, uh, really, uh, this is <laughs> this is quite the film. Um, honestly, it's one that I remember watching. Um, Some many years ago, uh, for the first time, I was just very like, just captivated by what I was watching because um, you know Denzel Washington normally plays the good guy, and here he's the bad guy, um, and he won an Academy Award for this film. Um, of course, you know people uh, look back and are like, you know, this was in compensation for this film or that film, you know, Malcolm X or something. Um, which to say this was in compensation for a previous role he should have won for, you know, uh, I don't think that would be too, uh, too far off the mark. Um, Denzel Washington was yeah, fantastic though, so, you know, gotta give credit where credit's due. He did a great job, um. And apparently, this was the most fun he's had, uh, you know, playing a part. And and I can definitely see and understand why. Um, you know, uh, I mean, Ethan Hawke uh, does a great job, you know, seeing how, you know, he, he sees how things are corrupt and how things really are and uh, just how unfortunate it is. Like, he wants to make an actual difference and... Uh, get things to a point where, you know, you can uh, just be able to uh, go out on the streets and not have to worry about, you know, drugs and other kinds of violence that happens because of drugs or drug dealings or, you know, whatever the case may be regarding, like, you know, narcotics. Um, so, you know, he really wants um, to make a difference. And there's some people who, you know, keep s saying, you know, like how when they meet Jake, how it reminded him of, you know, Alonzo Harris. And that kind of, you know, makes you think, like, you know, he clearly was, you know, not at all like this all the time. He clearly wanted to do the right thing. He wanted to 
to make a true difference to the community, or make an actual um, <clears throat> you know, uh, make a case. Uh, in cases where the bad guy uh, goes to jail, and prison, and such. So you know, but you know, Lonzo Harris is you know he became corrupt, and you know by the end of the film, you know, it doesn't seem like Jake is. No, people theorize he, you know, is. Though there's, you know, deleted scenes and. You know, there's a, I think an extended ending is more appropriate, but they call it an alternate ending, you know, obviously because it wasn't even used, but I think in a way it's sort of like, you know, <clears throat> seemed to cut together in a way so that, you know, the, the scene itself overall is not, uh, you know, you wouldn't think there'd be any more to the film uh, other than what you see, and so... Um, you know, Jake is, you know, he has a wife and a baby, so, you know, a lot of corruption, you know, you know, a lot of money and stuff, so, uh, oh, and then, uh, one cast member in the film, uh, Peter Green, um, He's Dorian in the mask, <clears throat> Zed in uh, <clears throat> Pulp Fiction, and in The Usual Suspects, he was Redfoot. I believe that was the character's name. And, um, and he isn't credited in this film, nor in, uh, nor was he credited in The Usual Suspects. And he's somebody whom, over the years, I've seen... In more stuff, and I was like, you know, this guy is very talented, and yet he doesn't seem to always get the recognition he should. And, uh, and I don't know, he's one of those guys who's in a bunch of stuff, and yet, you know, for some people, he might his face might be familiar, and yet the name doesn't, you know, always match. You know, one of those guys. Um, Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I like, uh, I like this film. Uh, Eminem, interestingly, was, uh, looked at to be, uh, Jake Hoyt, um, but Eight Mile was gonna be made, and so he had to stay available for that movie. Um, yeah, they didn't make it until getting filmed until 2001 or so and uh he was in the midst of also completing an album and also had to do with the soundtrack for that movie so there was a lot that you know he had to prepare for and uh, just get ready for um but would have been interesting to see him in this film and you know see him with uh have scenes with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre um Definitely interesting, for sure. Um, Ethan Hawke got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Um, but, you know, he uh, it's interesting because, you know, sort of like, you know, Al Pacino in The Godfather. You know, he has more screen time than Denzel Washington. You know, the big name. Pacino had more screen time in The Godfather than Brando. But because at the time they weren't that, that big of a name... Um, they were demoted to supporting actor. Um, <clears throat> I find it uh, fairly interesting that that is the case. Like, you know, like co-leads, and yet the one with more screen time gets sort of demoted if it comes to the fact that, you know, they get uh, acknowledged for awards. You know, instead of both being up for best actor, uh, you know, one is best actor and the other is supporting. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, Denzel Washington beat Russell Crowe for A Beautiful Mind, which a lot of people say he should have won. Uh, 
Um, and, I, and I tend to agree with that also, but, you know, he seemed to, Russell Crowe seemed to uh, upset some people in the fact that, you know, at the BAFTAs he won Best Actor there and had won all the other awards, but, you know, he was reading like a poem, and then that got cut off because I guess he was going on too long. Um, <clears throat> and so he found out about that, and he was upset, and he went to try and find the guy who uh, said to cut him off, to, you know, beat him up, but, you know, then, I guess he didn't find him, or if he did, he didn't do anything, like, like, if physically, you know, over, over, overly physically, he didn't beat him up, um, <clears throat> uh, though apparently he did, uh, uh, break some stuff, so, obviously that didn't, uh, um, uh, sway some people who were like, you know, or at least, uh, change the minds of people before the final voting for the Academy Awards, and so, instead of Russell Crowe winning Best Actor two years in a row, it's, uh, Denzel Washington who wins when he probably should have won Best Actor, uh, sometime prior, um, You know, uh, Russell Crowe seems to be completely, you know, overall calmed down over the years, so that's good. Um, Denzel Washington seems to have always been a fairly uh, collected person, from what I could tell from interviews and stuff. Um, especially with, regarding this, you know, he's not at all like this uh, character uh, he played, you know. <clears throat> Seems like a very nice guy. And, uh, yeah. Uh, very good film. Um, <clears throat> it was actually co cool to rewatch this film. You know, see the various corruption and stuff that goes on. And, uh, you know, just the setting and the feeling of everything. You know, that's a, you know, it's, it's, you know, uh, you know, there seems to be a sense of danger here and there throughout the film. Um, oh, also Terry Crews is in the film, you know, uh, uh, he also doesn't get, get credit either, but, you know, you could see him here and there. Um, yeah, one of his early roles. He's been in more stuff since, of course, but <clears throat> it's kind of cool to see how someone like Terry Crews go from you know, football player to then being an actor, and then uh, his early parts. You know, uh, I don't recall him having many lines. He might not have any lines, but he might say one or two things. Um, but yeah. Uh, He's good in the part, you know, not very big, only in a few scenes, but, you know, especially when you know who uh, Terry Crews is, it's like, oh, well, well, really cool. Um, yeah, this is a really good film, you know. I saw an interview where, <clears throat> you know, Denzel Washington hopes that there isn't any, like, real cops like Alonzo out there, you know, that's... That wouldn't be good. Um, and I agree. Um, Tom Berenger also is in this film. You know, does a very good job. Um, there's a scene where uh, where he's a uh, shooting gang members and as a <clears throat> holding one gun this way the correct way and then the other that way to show like how there's two sides basically like you know there's the law your um sort of honorable side of him or supposed to be then there's the corrupt and street side you know and now he's shooting here and there and 
very uh, very interesting character. Very uh, great performance um, by Washington. Great performance by Hawk too. You know, I think some people sort of at times uh, don't really talk too much about Ethan Hawke's performance um, because then again, you know, it's Denzel Washington. He gives an incredible performance. He's very He's, he's corrupt, and he's the bad guy, so in a way he gets some of the best lines, obviously, of the film, but Ethan Hawke's performance is great, too. Um, <clears throat> I think, in a way, you need a, a performance like Ethan Hawke gives so that, you know, Denzel Washington's performance works even better. You know, it works well already, but, you know, if you didn't have somebody like Ethan Hawke in the film might not have worked as well, you know, so you always need that kind of, um, person to work with, and, uh, two worked well, and, um, it's great to see, um, this film was also written by David Ayer, who, uh, who did, you know, first Suicide Squad film, um, not that great of a film, but, you know, Apparently, there's a cut of that film that is better. Who knows if uh, that will ever see the light of day? Nobody knows. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, yeah. Training Day is really good. You know, it's kind of cool to see some beginnings with some like, writers and uh, certain people who would act more like Terry Crews and just, you know, uh, helped Ethan Hawke become more well-known, more to the public, because he had done, he had done some good films, of course, but, you know, uh, some of them weren't as big as perhaps they later became, and so this was uh, definitely a film that helped uh, people know who he was, so, you know, very helpful in his career. And with that, uh, I'll just uh, end it there. I could go on and about how much I love it, but for those who, you know, haven't seen the film, um, you know, give it a watch. It's uh, it's worth it. It's like two hours. You know, very very good uh, good film uh, uh, with excellent performances and. Uh, very good dialogue. Um, yeah. Uh, I hope all of you are having a great day, have a great weekend and a great week, and I'll see you all next time.